January 2023, this channel community published a video that analysed the temperature anomalies for all global regions defined by NOAA. However, there was one large continent not defined, Antarctica. We therefore decided to examine the NOAA data of the Antarctic research stations to detect the modern recorded temperature trends of Antarctica. This task took much longer than anticipated. Many difficulties were encountered and even more questions were raised. But it must be said, we were warned. This study of Antarctic temperatures over the past two centuries warned that there is large interannual to decadal scale variability. It also warned of the short and sparse instrumental observations. We were warned again by a previous video of ours about Antarctic sea ice that is very pertinent to today's subject, to the effect that large scale variations make the trend very noisy and difficult to generalize. A combination of these issues made the plotting of temperature trends more difficult than normal, as you will see. Before starting our scan of Antarctic research stations, it will help to have a general introduction to the continent of Antarctica. Antarctica is the coldest continent on our planet. The coldest temperature ever recorded on Earth was recorded at Vostok Research Station on 21st of July 1983, minus 89.2 degrees Celsius. The Antarctic ice sheet is 14 million square kilometres. For comparison, the USA is 9.8 million square kilometres, and Europe is 10.2 million square kilometres. The ice sheet averages around one mile in thickness and is nearly three miles thick in places. Antarctica is surrounded by the Southern Ocean and can be divided into four regions. The Antarctic Peninsula, West Antarctica. Most of the West Antarctic ice sheet is grounded below sea level in places over 1.5 miles below sea level. East Antarctica is by far the largest area of Antarctica and it alone is roughly the size of the USA. Separating East Antarctica from West Antarctica are the Transarctic Mountains, which are over four kilometers high and 2,000 kilometers long. To provide a wide perspective on the subject and to give relevance to our findings, a brief history of Antarctica will be useful. We start 50 million years ago. Around 50 million years ago, the continents and oceans were still rearranging after the breakup of the supercontinent Pangaea. Antarctica was in a cool region, but there was no ice anywhere on the planet. But over millions of years, a gradual cooling of the Earth took place and ice started to form on Antarctica. The cooling continued and the ice sheet grew. Around 35 million years ago, the Northern Hemisphere started to cool also. Around 30 million years ago, the Antarctic ice sheet was large and well established. The cooling of the planet continued. until around 2.58 million years ago, the world entered the present Quaternary Ice Age and the Antarctic ice sheet was fully established. From that time onward, Antarctica and our planet have gone through cycles of cold glacial periods followed by warmer interglacial periods. From 2.58 million years ago, for around one and three quarter million years, these cycles had a duration of 41,000 years. 
while over the same time span the gradual temperature of Antarctica and the Earth continued to decrease. The duration of the cycles had corresponded to the 41,000-year Milankovitch cycle of obliquity, but at around 800,000 years ago there occurred the mid-Pleistocene transition and the cycles changed to an approximate 100,000-year duration of periodicity, which aligns with the average duration of the Milankovitch cycle of eccentricity. We continue the history of Antarctica from 800,000 years ago. There exists very good data that has been taken directly from the Antarctic ice sheet. This project by the European Project for Ice Coring in Antarctica, or EPICA, provides the data of climate changes stored in the Antarctic ice going back 800,000 years. This chart shows how the climate has varied from around 800,000 years ago to around 11,500 years ago, with the temperature deltas being measured in degrees Celsius. The dotted line represents the average of the last 1,000 years from which the deltas are measured. Temperatures in Antarctica have swung and varied wildly and naturally throughout this period. There have been swings of temperature of up to 11 degrees Celsius from the peak of the last interglacial period to the depths of the last glacial maximum. We now follow the data from 11,500 years ago, which is the start of our present warmer and milder interglacial Holocene period. Right up to 1850, natural temperature variations are significant and frequent with deltas of up to 5.2 degrees Celsius. If we zoom in and look more closely at the recent period from 2,000 years ago, we again see large natural temperature variations. Zoom in again from 600 years ago up to 1850. As well as continuous variations, we can see this period of hundreds of years where the Antarctic temperature was well below the 1,000-year average. This corresponds to the Little Ice Age of approximately 1450 to 1850, as defined by the IPCC. We are now in the period of modern record keeping on global temperature from 1850 to 2022. But remember the warning about the short and sparse instrumental observations. This means we still need to rely on the EPICA data up to about 1940, from which time data from research stations on Antarctica start to become available. Over the period of 90 years, from 1850 to 1940, the average temperature of Antarctica hovered around the 1,000-year average, with a mild downward trend. We are now ready to start our analysis using the data from international research stations. Our analysis will scan around Antarctica from the Casey research station to Vostok. At this point in the original video, we stepped through the data of 14 Antarctic research stations, but then came the new data. There were fundamental differences. In a future video, we hope to resolve those differences, but for now, we will summarize the results based on the end of year 2022 data. Both stations on the Antarctic Peninsula have negative trends up to 2022. The Palmer Station trend started 1981. The US Scott Bay Station on Ross Island has a negative cooling trend going back to 1972. On East Antarctica, all these 11 stations displayed cooling trends with the Mawson station starting its trend 1955.
We therefore concluded that an analysis of end of year 2022 NOAA research station data around Antarctica from KC to Vostok reveals a cooling trend that started as early as 1955. And that from 2009, all research stations around Antarctica, from KC to Vostok, have been on a negative temperature trend. We did identify the problems with the short and sparse instrumental observations and provided examples of missing data such as this at the Halley Research Station. For now, we leave you with the original conclusion that the Antarctic Research Station cooling trend started as early as 1955. If you enjoyed this video, you are invited to join our community on Locals.com. This link will take you directly to our site.